Luca Radu and I'm here at GPEC Summit, the 10th anniversary edition. I am now talking to Omri Akubovic, Hello. the founding member of Commerce Sciences. Hi. Hey. How has it been today with the presentation and the event? So the event was great so far. Uh, it was a very exciting day also to hear all of my colleagues speaking and also to speak in front of this great audience. And uh, for those who haven't been to the conference today, could you sum up your presentation a little bit? Because so, it had a very interesting title. I appreciate it. So first, I'd recommend all of them to come for you know next year's uh, conference. I think uh, a lot to learn. And I actually was a bit amazed when I started the lecture and asked how many people are running any personalization campaigns on their site. And maybe one or two people raised their hand. And then I went ahead and asked, OK, so how many people are running A-B test campaigns? and maybe one more person raised his hand. And that's actually very interesting because I can imagine that most of you are spending tons of money and resources to drive traffic to your site to eventually get only 2.2% of them converted into shoppers. So isn't it ridiculous to keep spending more and more money on bringing traffic while the conversion rates are that low? It is. And today, uh, during the presentation, I shared some best tactics uh, in order to increase conversion rate, average order value, uh, based on different personas or based on different segmentations. And from what we've seen, you could have a huge impact on conversion rate when you're, trying to, when you're segmenting the right people with the right uh, message. And that could be, for example, targeting first-time visitors uh, that are about to leave the site and encouraging them to sign up for your newsletter just for a small incentive. And the reason that it's so efficient, because if you look into your email campaign, uh, funnel, you'll see that that's the highest converting funnel. So why won't you pull more people into that funnel to get more sales? Uh, I think that most people are talking about increasing conversion rate, which is good, but it's a bit hard thing to digest and, and do. And what you do want to consider is the different KPIs to target different type of people. So first time visitors, micro convert them into email campaign, this is great. How about repeating visitors? Probably the conversion rate among this population is much higher. So Getting the conversion even higher than the current one would be challenging. So why won't you try to increase their average order value, which is not that hard. And actually a great tactic to do that is simply to target people that already added a few items to their sites, to their, um, to their carts, but not too many yet. And then encourage them, for example, only when they hit uh, 40 lays or 50 lays in their cart, say, spend 60 lays or more and get 10% off. You'll be amazed about you know, how that could increase your average order value. And eventually, everything that I'll send, I have a lot of more uh, tactics to share with you. Probably you'll ask me about a few more. I encourage you to test each and every um, thing that you have in mind and every good advice that you're, that you're getting because eventually some of them might turn into bad advice if you're not testing them. And um, Omri, you were talking about A-B testing as being very important. What would be three mistakes that you've noticed to be most frequent for online shops when they are doing it? When they are actually doing it, first of all. Okay, uh, the number one mistake is not to look into significancy when you're running um, A-B tests. Because you might see a immediate winner and they say, okay, that's great, 30% uplift, but only for 100 visitors. So is that a real winner? Not necessarily. You might implement that change too early to eventually see that the conversion rates drop to the normal levels because there was no significance and it was just a random, a random mistake. Uh, that's one. Another common A-B test mistake is not to run any meaningful test that will lead to an uplift, but just some you know, small tweaks. For example, changing the button, not on a single landing page, but across an e-commerce site from blue to red. Would that really impact your bottom line? Not necessarily, but for some reason, many, many people are trying those things. And my claim is that you should, you should test for impact and not for variations. And you wanted also a third, um, a third mistake. So th that, that something linked with the segments and the buyer personas. Okay, so yeah, but I wasn't talking about personalization just yet. I'm talking about like generic A/B test. Um, but also, not to personalize is a big mistake because the fact that something worked for you better, based on lo your lowest common denominator, it doesn't mean that the other one that lost wouldn't work better for a certain segment. And that's where personalization comes into the picture, where you can simply find 
the most appealing content or the most appealing variation based on the segment that you're targeting. And that could be anything uh, from first time visitors versus returning ones, the stage in their funnel, people that are about to live, so on site uh, behavior and some other attributes all the way from their exact location, time on site, and even the language that they speak. And if you are talking to about personalization and buyer personas, I wanted to ask you, how should you prioritize the personas you're focusing on? Because yeah. Obviously, yeah. Um, one big mistake when it comes to personalization, and then I'll also answer your question, is that people are trying, they're overwhelmed with the idea that they can target their visitors based on over 40 different dimensions. So they might create two narrow segments. And obviously, that's a mistake because it will take a long time to see uh, the results, a lot of work to create many segments, and it won't work. So the right way to do that is to find your lowest hanging fruits, meaning the pages with the highest potential. Uh, so that could be pages with lots of traffic, but low conversion rate, or pages with very high amount of traffic, but low bounce rate. Now keep in mind that it's not only about the amount of traffic that you get on the site, but also um, the conversion rate. So if you, to begin with, you have a high conversion rate, um, lower amount of traffic could be just enough. On the other hand, if you have a very low conversion rate, you'll need a very high amount of traffic in order to get uh, significant results. And you can always um, get an assistance when you're planning a personalization campaign or an A-B testing with a significance calculator so you could see how many traffic you need in order to get uh, results. And obviously, we do have also a significance calculator, so you could search for uh, significance calculator and commerce and you'll find the right page to help you plan your experiments. Okay, so a lot of mathematics and diagrams and so on. But, but very simple, all you need to fill in is just the amount of your traffic, mm -hmm. um, your current conversion rate, and then you need to see based on your hypothesis how much lift would you expect and to see if, if it's in the right time frame and the right and amount of traffic. How does your tool, Commerce Sciences, help in this journey? So basically our tool allows our customers first to understand their shoppers, to understand what they should be optimizing, and then more important, to optimize it without the hassle of long IT cycles, etc. So once the tag is in place, uh, you could enter our dashboard, define the segments that you want to target, or just the entire traffic if you want to run an A-B test, and then create um, whatever version that you want on your site with a few clicks of a button, removing one component from one side of the screen to another side, maybe eliminating components because some cases you see that too many options are creating products of choice which actually paralyze the shoppers. So instead of having them make any decisions, they will just run away. And you can also create additional overlays and that could be the exit uh, email sign-up messages, coupons, bars to emphasize your policies all the way from free shipping to the shopper's exact location rather than, you know, offer free shipping across the state. This is nice, but most people would screen it. Why won't you have uh, a bar, for example, a floating bar that will go with the shopper and emphasize your free shipping policy to their exact location, let's say Chicago. So those are a few ways. And obviously, we also have um, all the analytics and all the data so they could see the results and implement the most impactful version uh, right away. Um, and, and benefit it from the entire traffic and not just for 50% or whatever percentage that they tested it on. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Omri. It's pretty clear. <laughs> uh, one last question sure. to end the interview. Could you give us an example of a specialist in conversion optimization that you admire and follow <laughs> in order to recommend it to our viewers? Of course. So there are a few blogs uh, that I'd recommend you to view. One of them um, is Brian Eisenberg's blog. He's been one of the, let's say he started conversion optimization and A-B testing, testing back in the 90s, and also have some uh, bestsellers. Um, you have Brian Massey's blog, Conversion Scientist, that also lectured here today. Uh, conversion Excel is a great blog, and also blog.commerciences.com is a great resource uh, <laughs> for learning about A-B testing, personalization, and okay. the right stuff. Thank you, Omri. Thank you very much.